Welcome back in Ian Furness Sports Radio 950 KJR on a Tuesday afternoon, and that means one thing: it's time to check in with the joy and sunshine of our life. Yes, indeed, from KNBR, our good friend John Lund joins us, courtesy of Cascade Ice Water. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. There you go. Look at there, that. There if you go. if uh, Kevin, huh? Kevin, well, see now Kevin Product has placement. to post. He has to post the Zoom video right. now. We, there you go. We've got the Product placement. Cas- Get the orange mango there. What's your favorite? That's right. Orange mango. I like yeah. the, You know, I like all of them. The grapefruit is really good. I, I, yeah. I've never been a huge grapefruit guy, but it was really good. The strawberry lemonade. Oh, yeah. I, what do you I'm mix going it? through this stuff. What are you mixing it with? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think oh, they, it's amazing. I think they it's hate amazing. <laughs> no, it's just, I, You know, the thing is, it's airport rules. So if I get tired, it's almost like you'd normally drink one and then a little, you know, a little vodka about halfway through the show to deal with Papa. And That's, things are good. That's the beauty of doing a show at home, fella. Like, I mean, I got to go in and I got to go in and see Kevin every day, so, you know, and I'm going to drive yeah. home, so I can't go down that road. Oh, yeah, oh I feel bad for you. Yeah. When you're at home, it's airport rules. It's just, there's nothing. It doesn't yeah. matter. You don't even look at a clock. But you're by yourself or just with your 16 or 17 year old, right? So it's not yeah. bad. Yeah. I've got, yeah, I just got to lock the liquor cabinet. And he's getting around that age. Yeah. So I've got, I've got a 17, 18 year old and then, but, uh, and then the wife, but she's on the phone about 24 seven with her job. She's actually working. Like she has an actual job, <laughs> like a real job. She's on conference call after conference call and dealing with people in Amsterdam and Ireland. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing radio. So I know, doesn't, it, doesn't it make you feel bad to just do a, a certain extent when, when people are doing real jobs, and then they deemed us essential for some reason. Look, I'm not, I'm, I'm not fighting that, but it, clearly we are essential. But uh, yeah, they gave Friends us a little around me family. They're they gave us a little things. FEMA card or something that says like, like, like because it, there were in March at one point. I remember uh, it, <laughs> our two bosses, our program director, old Purple Sheet, and and our big boss, uh, CrossFit Rob. You know, he was. They, they're telling us, well, you know, we're here and there could be roadblocks on Elliott Avenue or, you know, like, like you may not be able to get into the city, you know? Well, first of all, that obvious, if that, if they could really do that, then we probably would have had like a lot less destruction and rioting in our city because oh, yeah. that obviously isn't the case, but they gave us these little cards. Yeah. Essential workers going and do radio and, Oh, yeah. We're about the furthest thing from that right now. All right. Uh, let's let's get to it. John Lund joining me. Uh, Cascade Ice Water. He's got his orange mango there, cranking it up with a little caffeine uh, in it today, 16 yeah, ounces. Um, the, this, all the news out there, obviously, is restarts and how it relates to the COVID and the Rona and everything like that. I, you, I know you have to love this because it just this morning – as a few NFL players started opting out and then all of a sudden there's this wave of, of Patriots players opting out. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden the, the conspiracy comes in. Well, let's see, uh, new England lost Tom Brady. They were probably going to take a step back this year. A little bit of a transition year is Belichick telling dues to sit out so they can tank for Trevor. Is that what they're doing? <laughs> well, you know, I, I wouldn't think so. But then when you, you mentioned of the five guys, Dante Hightower and he just had a, a, a son, right. Uh-huh. His wife did, uh, but uh, he's opted out of eight million bucks. Now th- this isn't the baseball players, and the baseball players still. There's guys like in San Francisco here. Buster Posey makes twenty two million dollars. Even thirty seven percent of that is more than you and I combined are going to make in our lifetime. So these guys have to make big financial decisions. But I mean, we're talking eight million bucks. Uh, are somehow the Patriots going to slip that under the table? And now if Stephon Gilmore opts out, then we may have something to talk about. Well, the thing with those guys is that that they can just, they just push it back a year. So, I mean, he'll get his money. It just, it's next year. It just sits around mm-hmm. for a year. He'll make his $350,000, you know, and I, I just, the one thing, and this is going to be hard because it comes across as, as not taking the disease serious. And I do, um, and you know, Hey, mask up Washington and, and let's, you know, hopefully we'll all find a way to have this thing go down a little bit, but I, I'm not going to be like, you know, Lewis Riddick and others that are going to, you know, stand up and applaud these guys for sitting out for a year when they've already made eight figures in their lifetime. Uh, and by the way, even like depending on who you are, unless you're an undrafted rookie free agent who I think some of these guys have made decisions going on, oh, I'm, I'm going to cash in 150 grand. No, you're, you're not because you're an undrafted rookie free agent, but, but the minimum is 150 and guys are making even 350 to sit out a year and then their contracts are still good for what next year and the year after. Yep. So it's an easy decision to make. I mean, if you went to the guy at Safeway or Fred Meyer, the grocery store and said, Hey, you can opt out for a year and not have to work, but we're still going to pay you a substantial amount of money to live on for the next year. Hell who wouldn't take that opportunity. Yeah. You're not seeing across all sports. You're not seeing the guys who are barely getting by 
not opting out. And I agree with you. Look, it, it, we're all we're all like Patrick Chun opted out, right? States. Yeah, right. But but it, it, you know, again, those guys have made money. The baseball players go back. I think Joe Ross of the Nationals is the only guy who doesn't have oodles of money that saved up. David Price, who uh, made some comments yesterday, and look, I know we're going to get into baseball, but the majority of these guys have a lot of money. They yeah. have generational wealth, and they can opt out. They have that decision. What you just talked about, the average person who's trying to get by and put food on the table, we can't opt out. We can't. No, no, no. And that's, and that's which is hard to do. Uh, all right, so just give me. Do you, do you think – is there a part of you that thinks that, that, uh, that Belichick is indeed doing that, that he's, that he's sure. telling guys? They're you know? always up to something. They're yeah. always up to something. I don't – even if – what was the thing in Cincinnati with the cameras? Oh, you know – I don't care what they're doing. It, their mantra more than any other team in sports and in life, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I mean, that's what he's doing. What, so they've gotten caught a couple of times. They've got their wrists slapped a couple of times. <laughs> what, what, everything they've done has been justified. Has there been a punishment that's ever happened to the Patriots where they would go, ah, I'm probably not going to do that again. If, that's what if, they do. If they, end up with the, does. if they end up with having like these eight guys all opt out, end up with the number one overall pick next year, Come Trevor on. Lawrence. Come on. Really? They could. I mean, seriously, who wouldn't give up a year? Now, I don't know how good Trevor Lawrence is going to be, but even we're talking to fans right now. Right. What fan base? Look, you're going to be bad for a year. But the prize at the end of the tunnel is if Trevor Lawrence is supposed to be the next great thing, mm-hmm. who wouldn't give up a year for that? Oh, it, it, Cam Newton isn't the answer. Jared Stidham isn't the answer. If they get a great quarterback again, they're rolling for another 20 years or as long as Belichick's alive. Well, that's the, I mean, that just this just does stink a little bit, man. This does yeah, smell you know, a little when, bit. Like, <laughs> like, when, when when somebody says to you, uh, you know, you're yeah, yeah. They've got a track record. Yeah. And it's solid. Yeah. Of cheating and not really being too sorry about it. No, it's like our friends, the Astros. I mean, we, you know, right. like last night, the Mariners are having a, you know, a couple, couple of these games, they, they lost three of four, but a couple of the games are cruising along. And all of a sudden, you know, Altuve hits the buzzer and starts, you know, yank, <laughs> raking home runs and stuff. It's like, oh, the buzz is, oh, Bregman, buzzer, uh, fastball down the middle. Here it comes. I know it's coming. I mean, I'm watching those guys. I don't know what your thoughts were in the Bay Area. I mean, you know, you cover the A's a little bit, and I guess it affects them with the, with the American League. I, I was telling Kevin on Monday, I, I found myself – this is a great thing about sports. I found myself, once again, absolutely hating the Astros, hating yeah. everything that has to do with them, hating that little – that little punk Altuve, hating Bregman and, and Spring. I hated every, – and every time they hit a home run, there's part of me that thought, you know what, they got a buzzer going. They got something going what? on. Well, and here's especially an empty stadium, can... especially an empty stadium when there's no security. <laughs> well, that's what they get. They they get basically exonerated of a year. Are we going to have enough venom for next year? Hopefully, we get fans back. Is there going to be enough venom to get them again? Yeah, probably not. So they get a freebie. I don't know if in the parks. I don't know what baseball is saying, and I don't know what your thought is. I watched the game on Saturday where they had the 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 fans in I think Wrigley Field. That was disastrous, and the cutouts are disastrous. <laughs> I mean, can you can you make it extra loud on the Astros? I know the Dodgers have already said it's too loud. Can you turn down the sound? It's like uh, your it? friends, the Dodgers, huh? Oh, <laughs> disastrous! I mean, just disastrous. How can you split against the Giants? It's like splitting against the Mariners. Are you kidding me? Hey, come on now, oh. man. Come on, John Lund joining us, Cascade Ice. Uh, all right, so <laughs> well, your team did all right. What the A's are three and one, and the, yeah. the Giants are two and two, right? Yeah, especially going down to the to LA to see the Dodgers, you got to take that. I mean, everybody basically makes the playoffs. If you have a pulse, you're going to the playoffs, so that's nice. Or at least you're staying in it. Yeah, it's not too bad. It, you know, until the Seahawks get things ramped up, hopefully. You know, if you're a Mariner fan, hopefully they can at least stay in it. I mean, that's the whole point of everybody gets in. Basically, it's like hockey. Well, I I I, I found myself doing things. I, I told Kevin, you know, we we're talking yesterday, like you know, get the you get the daily game notes, you know, from the baseball team. And yeah. usually this time of the year, I get the game notes from the Mariners. I just hit delete. I don't even look oh, at them. July. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, sure. it's. It, I mean, you're 20 games out or whatever. It's they're irrelevant. I get those things. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna read it. Hey, Kyle Lewis, this is fun. And but what I I found myself, you know, watching baseball as much as I could. I was kind of in and out. We're coming back from vacation over the weekend. But I watched baseball. I watched soccer last night. Got pissed off at the Sounders, how bad they were. Like, I was just – I was, like, mad. I was sideways mad. Like, really? Like, it just just a total no-show? But that's awesome. But what's the reaction been down in the Bay Area with – especially with Dodgers-Giants and just baseball being back? The, the Giants-Dodgers locally did the biggest number the, the opening night. Uh, it was Thursday night. They were they were part of the Nationals and the Yankees mm-hmm. and the and the uh, Dodgers and the and the Giants kicked everything off. 
uh, on Thursday. They did the biggest number they've done since 2013. Now, remember, they won the World Series in 10, 12, and 14. They big, did the biggest local number they have done since 2013, so seven years. People are starving oh for it. We don't care God. if there's no fans. We don't care if you're showing the cutouts from behind like you're not supposed to. We don't care who's in the lineup, Buster Posey. Who cares? Just put the, You just hit it right in the head. Saturday, I went out to get some air. You got to get some sun. You got to do something. We, we both live in really good states that way. But on Sunday, I, on perp, I watched everything. Like you have a free trial right now on MLB, whatever it's called, extra innings. I watched every single thing I possibly could on Sunday. I put on a bathrobe. I didn't, I didn't shower, nothing. It was just baseball for like six, 16 straight hours. It was glorious. Great tell having it, baseball back. I'll tell the truth. I mean, your, your airport rules and doing a show at home, do you shower anyway? I mean, like, what's your, pol- uh, what's your daily policy look like? <laughs> I mean, your policies. I have time. Your policies. Yeah, your policies change. Yeah. My shower time is what I'm doing with you right now. There's no way. <laughs> The owner is optional too, you know. You just yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just me. So, you know, nobody, yeah. nobody, nobody can smell you, right? Do you, do you shower to go into the studio to hang out with a bunch of other guys? Only out of respect. Or? Only out of respect for Kevin. You know, even though we're masked, <laughs> even, even, even though we have a mask on and stuff, I still yeah, it's just out of respect for him. You know, and and yeah. probably my wife when I come home and you know and so forth. But yeah, that's uh, true. Thank you. You've been married how many You're years? You're welcome, ago? Kevin. <laughs> uh, Twenty-seven coming up this week, fella. Twenty-seven. 27? Yeah. She's gonna yeah. shower. She's not going anywhere. You were there at the big you were you were there like three years in you were there you were like four years in when I was. And in, in beautiful salt lake well yes. i moved to, i moved to tri cities after one year i'm surprised it lasted oh. 27 yeah 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 salt lake was like an oasis when we got there so uh tri cities i lived there <laughs> kennewick kennewick oh my uh john Ludd joining us brought to you by cascade ice uh, and the, just real quick those numbers by the way if, if the biggest is 2013 you know, one thing with TV numbers that they've gone, the, the numbers aren't what they used to be either. Like, like it's, it's like inflation because you're deluded. You know, yeah, all cord, the different things you can watch. Yeah. More things you can watch cord cutting, you know, people are trying mm-hmm. all that. So that's a, that's an enormous, people are starved for it. Now the question is, does it remain? Because you know, the Marlins, what did they do by the way? Huh? Like, where did they go? What did they do? Cause something had to happen. Or at least we hope something happened because otherwise it's a little you, scary. Since we stumbled onto this, so they have a 113 page document. Mm-hmm. What's in it? Like where to eat on the road? You didn't think this was going to happen? There's going to be an outbreak. Oh my god, what do we do? They they acted they acted like in this 113 page, oh, we forgot about an outbreak. It's isn't it simple like go to the safest place you can go. Everybody quarantines at like they're acting like they didn't think of this in the 113 pages that there would be an outbreak. Of course there was going to be. That yeah. should have been on one A. It's like they're doing this from the seat of their pants right now. Well, What's in they, the document? I want to see. Well, shouldn't page one be if, if a couple guys get tested, like maybe take the day off, right? Like well, shouldn't about, that be page the, one? Yeah. How about this? The Marlins players texted each other and they made the decision to play. Yeah. Like, is there no protocol to, okay, if someone gets it, then you follow ABC. In other words, you tell the league about it first. They shouldn't have played the game. Everything should have been shut down. Everything gets, you know, everything gets fumigated. Like there has to be an A, B, C, D. And it doesn't sound like in those 113 page, pages, they anticipated anything like this. How could they not? Uh, it's Derek, unbelievable. Derek Jeter's team is going to screw it up for everybody, buddy. That's what's going to happen. Derek Jeter's yes. team. Uh, give baskets all around. That's what's going to happen. You know? Let me ask you this. If it's a big, if it's a major market team, if this is the Yankees, the Dodgers, I was thinking about this yeah. this morning. Like the Marlins is like, whatever. They could take yeah. a year off. They could be like, what was it? Dallas FC just said, yeah, we're not going to play. Yeah, That's we'll see fine. next year. We don't yeah. need you. <laughs> but we don't need the Marlins. Like if, if it's the Dodgers or the Yankees, like, ah, this thing's over. And plus, what's the 30-man backup unit for? I mean, I know these are like A-ball kids, but it's, Bring them you up. have an entire backup team. Like, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Hey, and if you're those guys and you have never made a dime in your life, you've been you've been playing oh. in the minors. Like, you're just sitting there back in Miami saying, "All right, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna right. make I'm gonna make six figures this year because those idiots decided to go to a club or something." You know? right. <laughs> it's, it's the greatest thing ever. You know? oh. oh my gosh. Um. Hey. Uh. How how how's the fear factor in the Bay Area for uh, Jamal Adams? Huh. I mean, is Kittle shaking in his boots or what? No, I- you know how fans operate? They wanted Jamal Adams, too, and it was ne- – you and I talked about this. It yep. was never realistic because they have so many guys to resign. They were never in on it. John Lynch yeah. said on our morning show this morning, 
that they never even made a call, even though they'd love to have him on this team. So right. everybody's, oh, Jamal Adams is great. Jamal Adams is great. They get Jamal, you know, Seattle gets Jamal Adams. Oh, he's a bum. He's not worth the <laughs> number one pick. Uh, <laughs> it, like, this is great. This is back to Harbaugh and Carroll. This is uh, George Kittle's awesome. So let's get Jamal Adams. Like, it's, it's just kryptonite. It's a chess move. It's awesome. Yes. And who cares about two number one picks? A, Seattle screws him up anyway. You know that sure. better than I do. Yep. And you guys, I'm sure, have talked about it. But he, he was a number six pick of the 17 draft. I mean, I, Seattle, I'm sure, was picking near the end of the first round. To get up to six, you'd have to give up two, one. People always forget this, too, when they do the math over one, number one pick. Jamal Adams was a number one pick. So you're getting that. And then you gave up another one. And you gave up a three but swapped a four. So that's basically it. So you gave up essentially a one. He was a one. So that's yep. what you're getting. And he's a proven commodity. If you think, and here's the other thing, people are talking about left tackles and premium positions. Oh, God. If you think that Jamal Adams plays a premium position for you, which in that defense it's been proven with Cam Chancellor he does, then who, that's a, every team has different values as far as what is a premium position. And for believe me, as someone who covers the 49ers and knows, they're shaking. I made some texts yesterday. They're a 24-year-old kid like, that is this good already and it's going to get better. And can and can blitz from the secondary, can cover George Kittle, which is a huge part of this offense. That's a major move. Well, and he plays with he plays with a chip, you know, and they haven't yeah. had that. When Frank Clark left and, you know, I mean, they got Bruce back this year and Irvin kinda of has that. But I mean, I just think back to the the Cam Chan now there are different players. Him and Chancellor are different players, and Seattle's never blitzed a safety ever since Carroll got there, so they're gonna have to use him different than that. Which I, I think it's not like Carroll's a dummy. He's like, Oh, I'm just gonna use him like I use Cam. Well, no, they're different players. But he does have that he does have that fear factor in him, that intimidation. And, you know, I mean, it's shades of, of going back in the day with uh, Vernon and Camp colliding, you know, and, and, and yeah. just and so you need a little and it brings some juice to the rivalry. Let's just hope they have it. You know, let's just hope we have that along the way. Well, and here here's the other thing that you have to look at. You, you first and foremost, you have to look at your division. Well, mm-hmm. who do you have to deal with? Well, you have to deal with this offense that anytime Kyle Shanahan's around it and you have George Kittle, you gotta deal with that. Kyler Murray's getting better. Arizona gave the 49ers two really tough games last year. You may have to spy Kyler Murray at some point. Jamal Adams can do that. They've got, you know, there's first and foremost, it's your division, the Rams. Yeah, they're down a little bit, but offensively because of the mind that they have behind everything else in McVay, they're going to be tough to deal with. You get a player who fits your division first and foremost. To me, a 24-year-old guy that's guaranteed to be great, they're going to have, they, you know, it's just like with the Rams getting Jalen Ramsey. They, they've got to, yep. they've got to resign him now because they gave up so much, but he's, he fits, he's fine. And anybody who criticizes the move just doesn't get it. Well, but that's, that's what a fan would do if you're an opposing team. If, if the Niners would have got him, Seattle would have said the same thing. Like, <laughs> whatever. He's not, come on. He played for the, of course he looked good. He played for the Jets. You know, everyone looks good if you're good, you know. I, no. uh, all right. So, so what is the policy? Would we shower him before the, before your show today or not? Yes, no? Uh, probably not. What do you think? What do you think? Like the percentage of showers has gone down across the country? Way like people, down. Like way it's, down. In fact, yeah. I read an article yesterday that deodorant <laughs> use is down, ice cream and booze is up. <laughs> the the, the main booze. two things that are up: booze and ice cream are up, and deodorant use is down. That's, people are buying deodorant. Well, well, I mean, hey, just, just little. It's just, it's a college shower, you know. I got that nine a.m. class. I got that nine a.m. class. Get up, baseball. Well, look, I mean, look at me. I got a base, the baseball hat on. Shavings optional, right? Well, here's the thing. The thing, the two things you absolutely have to do is put on, put on deodorant yeah. and brush your teeth. Everything yeah. else is optional at this point. A hat, like you said, a hat, deodorant, and brushing your teeth. Even if you're going somewhere, that's fine. Yeah, but even brush it. I, I bet I bet brushing the teeth is down too because you got to mask up. Who cares, right? Like if you got the, the breath blowing back in your own face, you do. Yeah. You're doing usually you do the brushing the teeth for someone else. Now you're doing right. it for you. Yeah, you don't you want the hal- breath. Yeah, you don't want re- regurgitated halitosis. That's a bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a bad. All day long. That's a bad issue at that oh, point. So, all right, uh, big, you, man. big thanks to Cascade Ice. Go with slam one before you got to deal yeah, with Papa. I'm gonna. Uh, that's what I do. I, orange these mango are awesome. And they don't have that booze in them. You're 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 no. you're stereotyping well, me. You no, don't have I mean, booze. no, I mean, no, I mean, not that. not this time of day. Well, I don't know. It depends on who you are. Getting close, and we're almost at ten. <laughs> Big 10 thanks. I start shaking. <laughs> I'll see you next week, man. Take care. All right. See ya.